Now you have this whole thing about sweet potatoes. So I'm, I want. How did that start? I mean, when? What's your first recollection of sweet? But your I'm gonna call it like this. Your sweet potato addiction. <laughs> when was the first time? <laughs> I must have been about. five or six years old when I was fixing a meal uh, I guess it was a dinner meal I'm not sure uh, oh, oh hold on a second hold on a second you was in Norfolk you said you was five or six and you was what fixing a meal what does that mean exactly cooking who was cooking I was cooking at what age at six with the with the stove going in the, in the what were you I'm sorry my I daddy built you know, years ago when they used to have the Coca Cola and the wooden crates, mm -hmm. my dad had. Well, I went to the dump. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With the boys, because I was hanging out with the guys. Mm -hmm. My sister, my little sister, was hanging out with the girls. Being a lady, I call it being a, a sissy, because I didn't want to be called a sissy, because I think the the guys. Had more things to do. They, they had activity, you know. They mm -hmm. played football. Going to the dump. And I went to the dump and bought back one of these containers. Mm -hmm. And I told Dad the reason I bought it home. I said, so I can stand on it. Because when I'm hanging out the clothes and things, I'm too short. When we put the sheets on the line. Oh, now this is this is the early Coca-Cola. In other words, this was made out of wood, not plastic. Made out of wood. Oh, okay. My daddy said, sister, I can take help you with that. So he took the nails or whatever was holding it together and uh, took the hammer and knocked them down into the wood mm -hmm. so you wouldn't feel it. He got some, had some paint. And he painted my little <laughs> mm -hmm. crate. So when I would have to cook, wash clothes, hang clothes, do anything, I could always use my little box because mm -hmm. that gave me some height. Mm -hmm. So um, one day my sister decided it was her time. She was going to hang out the clothes. No, do the laundry. The first thing mother said to her, she said, Joyce, let me look at that clothesline. I said, mother's going to get off her bed. She's not feeling well. Ain't gonna go outdoors to look at like, the clothes on. I said, I have been doing something that's wrong. Evidently, I have never seen her come out and check my, my laundry where it was on. She, first of all, she said, uh, Joyce, that was a good effort. I want that sh those sheets to be taken down because they are not bright and clear. It's bright and clear. And she said, and while you're taking those down, the pillowcases can go along with them. It wouldn't look right to have these nice clean sheets and the dingy looking pillowcases on the same bed. Listen to that, but, but that's, that's the way it looked to me. She said, Joyce, and then my brother, who became a uh, Jehovah Witness minister, always supported her whenever she said. If she said it was snowing, and everybody was saying, no, it's not snowing, Joyce. It's, my brother would say, good Lord in heaven. That's what she said. And mother said, and you're going to have to go down to Miss Floyd's cherry tree and bring me a, a switch. <laughs> but she's not supposed to say that because that's taking the Lord's name in vain. Okay, before we get to taking the Lord's name and then and beating on uh, the switch and the rod and all the rest of that stuff, let me go to go back. Uh, how, was George Joyce older than you or younger than you? Younger. So if you was five or six, two years younger. Well, what was she doing trying to hang up some some some? Well, who washed the clothes? I washed the clothes. So once I, I'm confused now. So when she hung up the flow clothes, if they were uh, dingy, that was because you made you didn't wash it right. You made it. You didn't make it. What happened when 
when she washed the things, evidently she didn't rinse it to get the soap or something else out of it. So therefore, it didn't have it didn't I guess it had that sparkling effect. Okay, like a so she took it down crying or she was crying. And mother says, You keep back that noise out there, I'm gonna give you something to cry for. What did my brother say? The Lord in heaven. That's what she was doing, mother. She's trying to say she's sorry. And that broke my heart. I said, She's gonna get a whipping just because she didn't hang the clothes out the way that I did. I thought she mother was talking about the clothes just were not hung out in a certain manner. Mm -hmm. The way I would I had been putting them out there. So but she didn't say that. She just said the clothes were not bright and sparkling and, and they they looked soggy to her. Oh, uh, okay. Well the So so well you know what, brother? It was almost time for us to get ready to go to school because we had had our breakfast and everything. I thought maybe if I didn't go to school that day, I could do the laundry over, hang it up, and when little sister would come home from school, they'd be nice and dry, and, I mean clean. Wait, I'm but no one told me I could stay home that day. That was cutting school. But mother just thought that maybe, I guess, they had, I had bought a note home or something that saying school would not be in session today, teacher's work day or something like that. Mother didn't ever question the reason I was home to me, but not little brother. Little brother had opened his mouth and praised her while we were having a meal or something. Little sister, I want you to know, girl, when you didn't go to school <laughs> today, <laughs> all Miss Bell, the principal, had all of us to come into the auditorium and Miss Keelan, the seventh grade teacher, did a special poem. And Mrs. Bunch, the fifth grade teacher, did a special song. And it was saying, she did Danny Boy. She did one about a boy. Yeah. Danny Boy, the pipes, the pipes. Mm -hmm. call him. India Johnson was a music teacher. And she said, when Mrs. Uh, Miss Johnson start playing she said nanny came out nanny was one of the seventh grade children nanny could dance to anything she could she could uh, dance to three blind mice and make it a production number <laughs> so now they're saying all this at the breakfast at the, at the table. Daddy said, said, why don't you tell me who to have a special uh, uh, program at school? I could have put in for a day of leave. <laughs> Mother said, I know you wouldn't. I didn't know she was not in school. I should have known <laughs> so, she was doing too okay, much of it. So you <laughs> so your brother ratted you out, but this happened because everybody was at the dinner table, like we used to do when everybody's at one table, and so you just talk about what's your day. Uh huh. So he didn't really rat. Well, he did rat you out, and, but I mean, <laughs> and that was a time for Daddy to always compliment us. Mm -hmm. Well, if he had some words of wisdom, he had overheard that when he was working, or we may have had a question. How is it that when Reverend E. L. Harris, the minister there in the community, would say something to us, what do you really mean, Daddy? And Daddy would pull off, go along with his eating <laughs> to explain to us. That is when the first time I'd heard anyone say, if you... If you uh, plan to give someone 
one of your little playmates a mm -hmm. present. Be sure you give it because you like it also. Hmm. Don't give anybody anything that you don't like hmm. or would not want in your possession. Hmm. Little sister said, you mean to tell me if I go up there to the five and ten cent store and buy something and I like it, and this is how she said it, what do I do then, Daddy? Because I don't have enough to buy two. Hmm. My little brother said, what she's mean what she means did. And what she's asking is, what do you do with that rule we just like shared with us? When you don't have enough money to buy two things. Daddy looked at her and looked at him and looked at all of us who said, My suggestion to you is don't get it. You will not miss what you don't have. Mm. I said what kind of this is uh, interesting? I said maybe this is a little girl talk. I said guys don't speak like that. <laughs> so she said, "Oh, like she was so disgusted." He said, "Don't you give me that sigh of I don't want to hear anything else." Because <laughs> Daddy was on a roll then. He said, "Because they'd asked the question, <laughs> and he he always tried to give." himself the opportunity to explain it in a manner by which we, the children, could understand. Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, I'll be so glad when this dinner is over mm -hmm. so I can clear these dishes from the table and get up there with my box and wash these dishes. Well, let's go back to the box. Now, you said before, you said you got the box because that's where you can um, be at the sink, but you also, you can cook. I'm asking you, at six, at five or six years old, what was you cooking? <laughs> that's what I want to know. Okay, what would you like to have for dinner? I, I, I would like uh, some, uh, some fish. Some fish. And some mashed potato. Mashed potatoes. And some greens. And some what kind of greens? Uh, I won't do collard greens. I'll collard just uh, no 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 collard greens. I'll just take some green beans. Green beans. Yeah, string beans. String beans. Yes. Okay. What kind of bread would you? Ooh, I take some rye bread. You got rye bread? I don't want I don't I, I don't want that Wonder Bread thing. I don't want the I white bread. We, I don't think we we had any Wonder Bread. I don't remember that. Mm, well, I, I it was something that I could cook. Oh, you oh you want to make the bread? Oh, okay, now just give me some cornbread then. Cornbread? You want the cornbread with <laughs> with some flavoring and vanilla flavoring? I, no, I don't want vanilla flavor. It's too sweet for me. Okay, well you, that's what you would have gotten if, if when I was fixing it, cause what? I thought it tastes good. You put you put vanilla in the in the cornbread. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Did you put egg in your cornbread? <laughs> okay, go back to the. I'm so you're you're t you're telling me that you actually cooked the the fire was on. You put some oil in the pan. Which you put, put some some uh -huh. some some uh, uh, lard in the pan. What you use? No, we use it. Was Chris Crisco? Okay, That's Crisco. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, so the pan, the, uh, the the grease or the the Crisco was getting hot, da da da, and then you had the fish. Now you didn't clean the fish; somebody else cleaned the fish for you. No, I think the fish man. Oh, yeah, the, oh, yeah, the fish man going in there. Oh, oh, yeah. And you had to go out there and put your order in. Mm -hmm. And I did the, but I would tell them, when you clean my fish, can you cut the head off? And the tail off, he said. And what else you want me to take off? I said all the little thing that's sticking out, <laughs> the little fence. <laughs> he said, "Okay, lady." <laughs> they were cleaning. This is nice. And I, they had this newspaper. They would wrap the fish in and actually surely, clean it. Surely. But I didn't think that was the right thing to do. No. What did I do? Bring a pan from the house out there. Everybody out there waiting in their hand waiting. To get that little fish that's been clean in the wrapped up in the newspaper. And I he see me. He said, Come on. I know where how you want yours. Heads off and tails off. Mm -hmm. And uh I said, Yes, sir. That's the kind my daddy likes the most of all. 
Okay, so you would cook this fish. Now, what about the greed? How would you make the the string beans? Now, that's another story in the naked city. One of the neighbors, two doors down, decided she was going to come over there and fix the vegetables. So when I got out of school and got home was cooking dinner, I wouldn't have to go through that of doing the vegetables. Preparing, doing it. Mm-hmm. But she didn't know what we had, what, what I had planned to cook. I was going to just... And we had some greens I had fixed the day before. We had enough for a supper the next day. That's what I was going to just warm that over. Yeah, leftovers, yeah. Mm-hmm. But when I got home, Mrs. Elizabeth told me, no mother told me what Mrs. Elizabeth had done. And she says, right there uh, on the stove, and the only thing you got to do is put it in the bowl mm. and get your spoon. Okay, so I'm still let us let's go back back. I'm still trying to figure out how did you get how did you start with the sweet potato uh, thing. She said, "Only thing I don't have, I didn't fix, was another vegetable." And I thought in my mind, another vegetable must be another kind of sweet white potato that she was talking about. She was talking about a sweet potato. She had on the table. She sat there, helped me put put all the food on the table. And I was putting the plates and now on the table. And the silverware and everything. Then she said, I'm going on now. I got to go home and get me a meal. Fix me a meal too. My brother, who's next to me, a year younger, said to me, is there any kind of way you can fix those greens would take that water out. It didn't say liquid or any broth or anything. That water out. I said, but that's not nice. I said, tell if we do that. Mrs. Elizabeth could come back here to see if we've been enjoying the dinner and her part in it. I said, that would ship so that we're not thankful. So my brother, the who became the preacher, said, I tell you what I'll do. I'm going to get to the door and peep. If I see Mrs. Elizabeth goes in and slam, she always slammed the door. She didn't have a closet. Just boom. He said, he said, she's in. And the one, my little sister, the sissy one, said to me, how are you planning to get that water out of that bowl, out of that pot? I said, I don't know. My brother said, the one next to me said, you could use that box that you stand on when you put the clothes out. I said, I said. So my brother, the who became the preacher, said it was safe for me to go there and get that water out. Brother, that was the first time that I had ever witnessed using a cup that you use for coffee as a way of getting that water out from around those collard greens. And I had to cut them up. She just took Mm. them out from the pot, Mm. the leaves or whatever, how they were, and put them in that bowl. Mm. And how do you do that? I said, I don't want to do that. I don't know how to work with that. But I was not allowed at that age to use the the sharp butcher's knife Mm. because that's dangerous. Mm. But since my brother was on detail for watching to see if Mrs. Elizabeth was coming back over there, I guess to see if we enjoyed the meal, (laughs) he said to me, stop. I said, why is Mrs. Elizabeth on her way back over here? What are we going to say to her? I said, we're going to say what? What have we been taught? I said, thank you, Mrs. Elizabeth. Are you cheering and enjoying your meal? And everybody said, thank you. It's like it was a concert. She said, I'm so, I'm so glad because I was worried to death. 
And then she said, I got to get back, man, because I don't want my food to burn. I, somebody said when she left, I wonder what Mrs. Elizabeth cooked for mm. her family. Mm. I hope it wasn't what she fixed over here with us. So from that day on, the rule was, if you're going to do this for us to help sister out, help me out, uh, let me know when you're going to do this. Because I want the the all uh, the cooking utensils and things uh, out. Because I think we were keeping those things in a cabinet near the ice box. Mm -hmm. I guess because that was the lowest one I, I could get to. Mm -hmm. And she said, "Oh, I don't mind doing that." And my brother next to me said, "Looked at me and said, we'll do forever." So then we start having our meal at a different time. So when you know Mrs. Elizabeth would be coming over there helping now, mm. which was a nice gesture. But I we didn't like the way Mrs. Elizabeth cooked. <laughs> okay. okay. Because it was the way her mother mm. cooked. When her mother, Mrs. <laughs> Lord have mercy, when she would cook, you have to be there and watch. Just like you're going to cook it next time. Well, how else you going to learn how to cook? In her way. You you in her way when you're doing that. Oh. Sit over there where the children pull to sit. So that's the way they did it at their house, I guess. Mm. When grandmother or mother was cooking, the children stayed out of the way. That's funny. My grandmother was the exact opposite. She she wouldn't tell you what was going on. If you wanted to find out, you got to you go there and watch and look at what she's doing. She wouldn't. Have, there was no children section. If a child was around, then we could little watch. If we wasn't around, doing something else, we was doing something else. Ah, uh, but that's the way you learn. Mm. That is a way you learn. Observe. This is what I tell Alexis when Alexis go around telling the folks that I went to a finishing school, and they say, "Why, wow, Alex, I." Had you had a lot of money, didn't you? Alexis says, no. You learn by using your senses. I said, I've heard that before. That's what I told Alexis. Mm -hmm. She wanted to know how did I learn how to set the table? How did I learn how to do this? And I said, just use your senses. She said, which one, my grandma? I said, all of them. You use your eyes to observe with things. When you hear people say certain words and they give you the meaning when they're discussing it. I said, when you taste something and you said, that's a nice taste. But you try to find out what is the what was the flavoring. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that yet. I could have been saying spices, but I just said the flavoring. She said, well, how do you find out how, how you, uh, when you have to say you, you eat, you just get right down and sit down and eat? We can't do that. No, I can't do that. She, I said, why is that? She said, why is that? I said, because first you want to wait to give thanks. You want to say at least thank you for this food. She said, Grandma, would Granddaddy tell me the same thing? I said, yes, he would. He wouldn't eat unless he did. She said, you mean you tell me using your senses is that important? I said, very important. I had that one little session with her about that. And when she told the children on the bus why the uh, that I did not go to finishing school. I just used my senses. One little girl who lived around the corner from where uh, Mercedes and Lil Walter's house is said she went home and told her, her, her mother, from now on, you know, before we eat, you're going to have to say your blessings. Simply as, thank you for this food. Her mother said, you learned that in school today, didn't you? She said, no, I learned that from Alexis. Uh-oh. <laughs> you mean, she said, you mean Alexis? She said, Alexis, they both say. 
Because mm -hmm. Alexis had a very bad read saying her name was Alexis J. Jose. Just, just Alexis was not enough. Yeah, put the last name her in there, yeah. mother said to her, the next time Alexis Devose comes here, I want to see her and thank her. So she told Alexis, and I said, these mamas are going to be mad with me. Because I thought I was just overstepping myself explaining things to Alexis. I didn't know Alexis was going to take the message that she received from me and share it with her little friends. Mm -hmm. I said, well, only thing I can do is I promise, no, we promise Mercedes that we would take care of her, Alexis, as if she was our very own child, which she was our grandchild. But I said, I want Mercedes not to have to worry being deployed. Mm. Brother, let me tell you, it got to the point that if Alexis would ask us something or we would say something to her, explain, she would say, would it be all right to tell my friends? Oh, because okay. they don't know this. Mm. And I said, why are you there? Please take me out of a finishing school. I said, Alexis, when I was that age, I didn't know a finishing school existed. Mm. I could hardly remember going to the public elementary school. Mm. She said, I still can't see how you can learn so much. You were so little, no young, and you can remember how to fix something you've never had before. I said, yeah. Oh, I know. You use your eyes to see what it was. You use your your lips, no, your tongue to taste it and something else. She said, but how could you do that? When you when you cook it, I don't see you sampling it, no, taking a sample of it. Mm -hmm. I said, I had. She said, is that why you have a little spoon there beside when you cook? And I said, yes. Mm -hmm. I can sample a spoonful to see if I have too much salt, don't have enough salt, or if we put sugar in it, if it's too sweet. She said, you can do all that with one sample from my spoon. Just a teaspoon. I said, a little spoon. Well, I'm still trying to figure out about the sweet potato situation in you. Miss Floyd, not Miss mm -hmm. Floyd, Miss Elizabeth decided that day they were going to have, no, Grandma and her mother was going to make some sweet potato jacks. I didn't know how to make a sweet potato jack. I don't think I'd ever had a, a sweet potato jack. And I've never heard of a sweet potato jack. Nothing but a pie folded over, over the, with the crust. Oh, the, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. It's like, like pie crust and, and putting the filling inside. Like a fruit uh, souffle, or sweet potato pie. Well. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, fruit in the edges. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Smith put hers in a whole lot of oil, fried hers. But I knew that was too much oil to mm -hmm. myself. No one told me, but I just thought. It's too much oil for the little children, my sisters and brothers. Now, you was thinking this you was like six years old. So I was six. six years old. Okay. Mrs. Smith bought us some jacks, sweet potato jacks, for our dessert. And I said, ooh, that looks good enough to eat. Wrong thing to have said. She said, honey, I bought an extra one. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm going to enjoy it at dinner time. You can eat this now. I said, no. I said, no. Daddy would want us to enjoy it at the same time. Put the weight on my daddy. Mm -hmm. When Mrs. Smith left out the house, I looked at those jacks. And I thought about dinner tape. I said, it's going to be a long time before Daddy gets off that bus 
coming from the shipyard. I think I'll just take me a bite. Brother, let me tell you, I took the knife. Not the knife we would, I was not allowed to, to handle. This is too sharp. Mm. I got me a, a butter knife. Mm -hmm. I didn't know such thing as a butter knife. Every knife was whatever we needed it for. That was the kind of knife it was. Well, you, you got the little butter knife, the small, the little one, not the not the long. The, not oh, the, this uh, had a long, nice blade to it. Oh, cause that, well, we don't, what do we call it? We just call that a regular knife, even though because the the sharp knives are called steak knives. With that, I know the long one that's like a butter knife, uh -huh. but it's not as you know. In fact, they didn't even have the serrated things back then. Didn't have it. No, it just just it was like a big butter knife. That's what you had then. Okay. All right. All right. So I just took the knife and cut the edge of it. I said, I can take a, a bite, a sample of this, and it won't be missed. And now, at the dinner time for dessert, I'll take that particular one. Because mm -hmm. it's all been being, I call it used because I had a sample. Mm -hmm. Brother, let me tell you, I thought I had was flighting. And going to heaven. Mm. I said, I don't know what is inside this jack, but I want some more of this jack. What did I do? I just kept it to myself. And it was dinner time. And I said, Daddy said, Sister, do we have any dessert? I said, Yes, sir, we have some freshly made. Sweet potato jack, no, jacks. And I brought it to the table. He said, Hey, these are tater jacks. Mm -hmm. I said, No, sir, they're not tater jacks. They are sweet potato jacks. He said, Where'd you buy these? I said, I didn't buy them. I said, Grandma Smith made them and brought them over here for us to have for dessert. He said, I'm telling you too. If you don't mind, I'm going to ask uh, Sis Smith if she could make me some more. Do you think I could put one of these in my lunch box? I said, yes, sir. I said to myself, I'm going to get a chance to see some more of this potato jack. Brother, it was almost like somebody had put a note in the kitchen. Sister, when you cook, dinner, be sure to have the jacks as a dessert. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the house thought like it. The jacks. Mm -hmm. We they had not given saying sweet potato jack. It was just jacks. And when we go, I would go to the store and we bake in the market. Mm -hmm. I would go to that department and ask the lady there. I said, where do you sell uh, sweet potato jacks, and she said, "You shopping for your your mother?" I said, "No, not my mother, for everybody." And she said, "Okay, and you want jacks, sweet potato jack?" I said, "Yes, ma'am." So she said, "I'm gonna tell you how you do this. You need to get these potatoes, raw potatoes." And take them home. When you get home, when you're gonna, you want to cook them, you have to put them in some water or a sinker and wash them to get the dirt around them and on them. Mm -hmm. I said, Miss Smith didn't have that pot. Our mm -hmm. jack didn't look like this. Mm -hmm. But she was telling me how you identify them in the store. Mm -hmm. But then she said it was an orange potato or it wasn't the, I mean. It was the old fashioned orange potato. Mm -hmm. Like yams, we, we call them yes. yams. Okay. Brother, I watched that lady tell me what to do with those potatoes. I was ready to go get on the bus to go home because I wanted to try washing these dirty sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. But she said, it depends on how you want to to eat, enjoy them. You want them just baked, broiled, no, boiled, and you can put some margarine on them and some some flavor, some cinnamon. Exactly. I said, what else? She said, enjoy. Mm. 
Brother, I don't think that day my little grocery list became very, very limited. Because I think it, in my own mind, the faster I get all these ingredients and things for this jack that I'm going to make when I get home, mm. the faster I can get on that bus and Mr. Spellman's bus would bring us back. Mm. I had no idea that there were other things on, that I was supposed to pick up. But only thing I knew I had what there were the ingredients for the jacks, how long let it cook and everything, and enjoy. Mm. So I got home. My mother said, did you get everything? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, what are you smiling about? I said, I have a surprise for some, for, for dessert. She said, what kind of surprise? I said, it belong it begins with sweet potato, Jack. That's not something how you spell, tell somebody what you're gonna eat. It was just, I was telling her what it the surprise was gonna be. And she said, mm -hmm, I know it. Your daddy gonna like it, huh? I said, I hope daddy daddy doesn't like it. And she said, have you cooked anything that he did not like? I said, no, because he always says at the table how much he enjoyed the, the supper. Mm -hmm. And especially he would say, and I especially like the way you did those and you this. Mm -hmm. So she said, well, I hope I get in the habit, you know, get well enough so I can get at that table mm -hmm. and, uh, say that. I said, Mother, you can say that from where you are, right here in the living room. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that when you, you're sick like that, you don't have the energy mm -hmm. to do all of that. You fix a meal that is mm -hmm. fast, fulfilling, and somebody who can cook it. Mm -hmm. been, so that I said, from then on, Daddy would say, Are we going to have sweet potatoes tonight? I said, Yes, sir. Another time we would have a meal, and Daddy said, Sister, this, he was so use the expression, you outdid yourself. You know, you're yeah. outdoing yourself. That means it's really good. <laughs> See, it was a while before I understood that expression, because mm -hmm. I thought that was a negative thing mm -hmm. outdoing yourself he meant I was doing going beyond the call of duty mm -hmm. brother let me tell you I got to the point I would eat cooked sweet potatoes raw sweet potatoes mm -hmm. baked sweet potatoes any way that I could learn how to cook a sweet potato we had it and the, you know do you remember your grandma having fixed mm -hmm. butter and it came all white like mayonnaise mm -hmm. and you got a little uh, button on the package, on the box. Yes. And, and you put that button in there and you s squeeze the, the bag, plastic bag, mm -hmm. and it turns to butter. I didn't know that. I didn't know that was uh, the, the food coloring. Oh, no, I never knew. I, I don't know that. I never saw that. When you couldn't, when you were trying to get <coughs> butter or margarine, that is the way that it, it was in the, in the store. Mm. Uh, it came in a box. Mm. And the more, more you would squeeze the plastic bag, the richer in color the content mm. became, and it became the, the butter. Okay, well, let's. Uh, uh, I'm gonna. We're gonna talk another time. We'll, we'll continue on our sweet potato journeys.